welcome to the first ever video of the Diary of a Site Engineer. Today we will be covering profile boards, the lost art in site engineering. Profile boards are used to control earthworks on site and will probably be one of the first tasks to be completed by a site engineer. Profile boards are used to control the reduced excavation that is applicable to drainage, pipelines, foundations, road construction and any other hard standing, which can either be level or set at a gradient. Although the popularity of profiles has decreased over the years due to technology advancements such as machine control and laser technology, the technique should still be learned as not all projects will warrant such budgets and resources. When installing profile boards, as a minimum, you will require two profiles and one traveller. The idea behind profile boards is to imitate the gradient of an excavation and therefore you will need two visual guides that can be aligned with one depth gauge which is known as the traveller. This will indicate whether a cut or fill is needed. When deciding on the length of the traveller, the rule of thumb is to add 0.8 metres to the maximum excavation depth. The traveller length should ideally be a multiple of 0.5 of a metre and so you may need to round up your calculated traveller length accordingly. As you can see here, this is a visual aid of the line of sight between the two profiles and the traveller. It is very important to look through the three and try to get down at the right level. This will help to be as accurate as possible. Profiles can be used very easily on flat excavations, but can also be applied in more complicated scenarios. As you can see here, profiles can be used to set out crossfalls in multiple directions. The principle of setting these out remains very much the same. In terms of the profile, additional boards can be added for different layers such as dig level and stone level. However, I feel it is easier to add an additional board to the traveller or make two separate travellers. Okay, that's enough boring theory. Let's head out for a worked example. Identify the excavation zone, ensuring to offset your pegs either side of the proposed dig area. The offset should be gauged on the size of the dig and also on the machine you will be using. You don't want to put pegs where they are going to get hit. If the dig spans a large area, you can position profiles adjacent to the dig with offsets. For the demonstration purposes of this video, I set up in a local grid to achieve relative levels to the surrounding area. Then take levels on the top of each peg and ensure to record with reference. Taking an approximate ground level in the dig zone allowed me to identify a suitable dig depth for this scenario. On site, you are more than likely going to be working off planned drawings. I chose a dig level of 41.500, giving me an approximate dig depth of 1 meter. Add in the traveller factor of 0.8 to my approximate dig level of 1 metre gave me a 1.8 metre traveller. I decided to round this up to 2 metres. Record everything in your book. This is like an engineer's bible and will save you a world of pain if something does go wrong. You are able to prove you have done your part right. This is how I record for profile boards. In the first column, I record the levels that I am trying to achieve, in this case the dig level. In the next column, I add the length of the traveller to the dig level. In the next column, I record the levels of each peg that I have driven in. It is important to work in a systematic manner to avoid assigning incorrect levels to pegs. In the next column, I record the plus or minus factor for the profile. I get this by subtracting the peg level from the level plus the traveller column. In the final column, I write down the peg reference. In this scenario, I have chosen to use peg 1 and peg 2. However, on a live site, I may choose to group these into chainages or sections. For example, chainage 100, peg 1, and so on. I use the right hand page for general notes or levels that I may want to refer back to. As seen previously, peg 1 requires a 316mm add on section. This is where I would make a T section and put a nail full depth at 316mm. I would use this to set the profile on the peg and then drive two further nails lower down to attach the T-section to the peg. 
I would then repeat the process for each peg. And that's as complicated as it needs to be. I would then go through and check the obvious. For example, I knew my dig was approximately one meter, so I can check the difference from the top of the profile to the top of the traveler. This is the line of sight you should be looking for when the excavation is complete. The traveler should be the same visual line as the profiles at either end.